Okay, folks, welcome to Market Wrap for March the 15th. Okay, so before we get into it, uh, tomorrow, Fed meeting, big day. Secondly, I did some analysis of a shipping stock called DAC. I published it on the website, if I remember. I will post a link to it in the email that I send this out on. But either way, it's in the blog section of the website. It looks like a really good stock. I think it's moving up higher. Danios Corporation or Danios Group. Shipping company, really good fundamentals. Very, very cheap, great chart. Okay, let's um, let's kick things off with strategy. It's unchanged. Uh, we are still long of commodities. Yes, they have pulled in some. Our little egg company that could, Calmain Foods, continues to pump up higher. We'll go over that chart in a moment. And we are neutral. The banks, meaning Goldman Sachs, we are neutral of technology, meaning Facebook, using strangles. We are generating cash flow through selling option premium. So let's begin with the 10-year yield. This is a continuation move up higher. It looks as though we're going up higher on yields. I don't know how much longer the growth stocks can continue to rally. I mean, we had a good day today. It was a very strong day. But as yields pump up higher, growth stocks become more and more expensive. Many of these companies have no earnings. So what if they have debt and they have to roll that debt over at a higher yield? Oops, that's going to be a problem. So beware the 10-year yield for growth stocks. The TLT, the 20-year bond ETF, outside reversal bar, we're going lower here. Volume did drop off a little bit, but I do believe we are going to head lower. To the TIPS, Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, uh, getting killed. Why? The Federal Reserve reports tomorrow. They're going to raise rates by a quarter percentage point. My response is, so what? It doesn't matter. It's too little, too late. If they if they if they hike by a full percentage point tomorrow, it's too little, too late. So I think the tip market is pricing in a far more aggressive Federal Reserve than I think we're going to get. Remember, we have the Ukraine out there. We have a lot of geopolitical risk. They've already stated they're going to be using that as a new crutch for why they can't do the right thing and fight inflation. The dollar. Closed down today, but it did close off the lows of the session. I'm not willing to say yet that we're done going up higher here, but folks, the news out of Saudi Arabia is not dollar bullish. They are looking to diversify out of just accepting U.S. dollars and looking to take on the Chinese yuan. Now, I've been saying this for the past three weeks. We have done ourselves no favor. In fact, we took a knife, we put it to our own throat, and we slashed because now every country in the world that is on the dollar-based SWIFT system understands how vulnerable they are to us if we get mad at them. So beware the U.S. dollar. The VIX crushed today. Outside reversal bar looks as though we're going to head lower. I mentioned this last night. The Stokes were weak and looking as though they would get weaker. The Dow Transports, daily chart, they broke out today. FedEx reports on Thursday night. We'll be doing an options earnings trade there. Really nice day today. Now, the transports are not growth stocks. These are your cyclical stocks, like Danaos Corp., the one I just did a video on. And I'll show you that chart, a little bit of a spoiler alert here. Uh, DAC is a symbol. You can see beautiful bullish reversal bar on the day. Uh, we're going higher. I will note that there is a, a resistance level at around 104, 105 per share on DAC. Great volume, very cheap. Loving this chart. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, daily chart. It recaptured resistance. Good stuff. We'll pause the declining 20 period moving average. No great shock. That's a bad tick. That's not the real volume. The S&P 500 daily chart. There, the momentum indicators are improving here. We're starting to see higher lows and the beginnings of potentially new higher highs. Stokes are a little bit of a hot mess, but maybe we're getting a higher low here. Not quite sure. The, the real key here is going to be, do we close above 428 per share on the spiders? Simple as that. Keep in mind, you have the declining 20-period moving average, which we've ran into a few times before now. This is going to become less and less of a resistance level to get through. 
But I think this new leg up, while initially it may consist of growth stocks because they're so beaten up, by and large, it's going to be your cyclical names that are going to take us higher from here. Now, at what point does everything buckle due to, loving the MACD here, due to higher yields? Back in 2018, it was around 2 spot 3, 2 spot 4% on the 10-year yield. Then everything, everything buckled up, and that's when we had the last taper tantrum. Now, keep in mind, we have far more debt on our balance sheet, on the Fed's balance sheet, than we did back in 2018. So I would assume that that threshold of pain is going to be seen well before 2.4% this time around. The triple Qs, up over 3%. Are we breaking out here? Let's update this chart. I'm liking the RSI here. I'm liking what I'm seeing early on. Let's get rid of this. Maybe it's time to retire that. Uh, we're right there. We're ready to break out. Possible high or low. Not loving this. This is still a bit of a hot mess. That's your momentum indicator, the Stokes. They are still declining. Good price action today. No real fade on the day. That's good stuff. Volume was okay. So the Q's shaping up here a little bit. Small caps, daily chart. Up over 1.5%. I mentioned this last night that we had broken down below support yesterday. And that we might, if we didn't get a continuation breakout, we might see a limp back up in an effort to try to recapture this. Basically, a breakdown point retest, unlike the opposite, a breakout point retest. Where we break out, pull back, retest, and then get a follow through breakout. This could be the exact opposite. A breakdown, rally back, failed recapture of support, then you get a continuation breakdown. So don't get lured into this quite yet. This could be a bull trap ahead of the Fed meeting. All of this. Uh, volume was very, very light today. That's a tell. Technology. Daily chart. A, a great reversal bar versus yesterday's close. I'm not ready to go buying. We don't have any breakouts yet on our indicators. Uh, no breakouts yet on price. We closed at resistance and volume is light. Consumer discretionaries bounced back today. What were they up? Three and a third percent, a little bit more. Uh, RSI rising, no breakout yet. Volume was good. Energy, daily chart. Big gap down. We spoke about this last night. Kind of in no man's land. I, I wasn't 100% sure that we would break down, but I was concerned. So we did get the breakdown on volume, folks. So we may have more downside to move here. And keep in mind, the weekly chart, I think it was fellow member Minoj asked me about Devon Energy the, earlier today. And this is a very similar chart where uh, we got extended. We're pulling back now. Uh, we have our indicators that are rolling over here. So we may have a little bit more pain to go here to the downside. I don't think this is a broken sector unless, of course, the global economy really begins to contract because ultimately, absent the Federal Reserve doing their job, which they refuse to do, which is to fight inflation, the only cure for high prices is high prices, meaning prices get so high, you have demand destruction, countries, the globe goes into a, uh, I won't use the D word, but I'll say recession, moving on, emerging markets, which have been hammered due to China, concerns about COVID over there, concerns about possible delisting of stocks here in the United States. 30% of the EDC is, I'm going to keep saying that because I want to keep reminding people, 30% of the EDC is Chinese, if not more now, because Hong Kong is, for all intents and purposes, China. So even more than 30% now. So beware, this is a heavily weighted international stock of Chinese companies, gold really hammered today, down 1.59% on, well, volume rose, but it was still below average. I think we have more downside to go here. We'll probably consolidate. I think I mentioned last night that my price target was 1940 to 1920. We, we undercut that a little bit, but we bounced. To our position, the GDXJ, reversal bar. Closed up over a percentage point on the day. Volume was light. NUGT. 
up 0.83%. Note how we were stopped at, what was the high of the day? High of the day coincided with resistance at 65.69. So I wouldn't go adding more here until we closed above 65.70 per share. And take note, Stokes, while they did put in a higher high, they're now putting in lower lows and the Stokes are going the wrong direction. So let's just be careful here. Volume was light. MACD is going to go negative tomorrow. The silver miners, they were down 1.5% today. Stokes weak and getting weaker. So we're, we're looking at a short-term pause here, and this is going to be our opportunity to pull back because what will probably happen is that people fall in love short-term again with the growth stocks, forget about the mining stocks, and as they forget about these companies, what we want to do is we want to back up the truck. So SILJ, our silver mining play, up 2% on the day. Volume light. So let's beware. Watch these volume bars. Gold money, that was up 2.67% on the day. Stokes were oversold, flattening out. Good stuff. Nice bullish reversal bar on the day. This could be bought. This could be bought. Volume was light. Calmain Foods. The little egg company that could broke out today ever so slightly, but it broke out. We were higher. We faded a little bit. Volume, awesome. Really, really nice. And take a look at the macro view here, folks. The whys behind we made this, why we made this an investment a while ago. We knew what was coming. Monthly chart, massive breakout of a long-term consolidation. Quarterly chart, even more impressive. We are up 27% this quarter alone. OPTT, Ocean Power Technologies, up 3.85%. This could be bought. Bullish reversal. Bo Actually, no. Don't go buying. The stocks are going in the wrong direction, down below 50. I do like the price action, though. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see this pump up higher. They reported earnings. Apparently, the street liked it. The street likes it. We like it. LABU. So, this has been extremely volatile this week. But today, we had a nice bullish reversal bar. We are short of the 1250 puts expiring on Friday. I'm looking for, what, a 13 cent move here. I don't know whether or not I'll roll this position or I'll just take the stock. I'm beginning to like the setup here. I, I like the RSI. I've liked it for a while now because note how we broke out here. All right, that was at around, what was the closing price here? Close was $16.10. Now think about this. We broke out. Here was our low back here on the 23rd. We have never put in a new lower low on LABU, despite the fact from this breakout on RSI here at $16 a share, we've moved down to a low of $11.53, closing the day out at $12.37. RSI doesn't want to go down. It doesn't want to break to new lower lows. That's relative strength. These stokes need to hook up. We need to see another higher low. Bullish key reversal bar on the day. Volume, awesome. I think it goes up higher. McDonald's. Okay, so we have a strangle here. 235 puts, 225, excuse me, 235 calls, 225 puts. We booked profits today on the 210 puts, rolled them up to the 225s. Uh, resistance at 234 per share. So ideally, we stay below 235 by Friday afternoon. The probabilities are not the best, but what we have here is a ton of resistance up here. And you have the declining 20-period moving average, which is going to act as a little bit of a resistance level. So maybe it'll act as a ceiling, a declining ceiling on MACD or Mickey D's, MCD. Volume is good. All right, so we saw a little bit of a sell-off in the afternoon, sigh of relief. Hopefully, we pull back a little bit more today, excuse me, tomorrow, next day, into Friday. Facebook. All right, we have a strangle here, deep out of the money strangle, bullish reversal bar. I think this is a buy. I don't want to, I don't want to buy it in front of the Fed meeting. We already have a long, short position on this. What does that mean? If you watch this on the replay next week. So down below, we sold the 155 put options expiring April 14th. 
and we sold to open the 235 calls expiring on April the 14th. So I'm feeling good about the trade right now, and we may even get long of the common shares tomorrow. Loving RSI. Look at how it's hooking up now. How was volume? Volume is a bit light. Now, Goldman Sachs, let's go to the weekly chart. We have another strangle here where we sold to open the 260 puts down here, and we simultaneously sold to open the 375 calls up here. Now, the weekly chart so far is looking very bullish. So I'm not against possibly buying the shares, some shares, and taking a position to the long side. But we'll see how we close out the week. We'll see how the markets react to the Federal Reserve's announcement, and we'll take it from there. There's life before the Fed announcement, and then there's life immediately thereafter. So we're going we're gonna to wait for the thereafter. And with that, folks, everybody have a great night, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Be well.